Come on, y'all can put your hands together. Come on. I told. Come on, victory is mine. Come on, give God great praise in this house. Aren't you glad to be in God's house one more time? Come on, bless the name of the Lord. This is the day that he has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let all the earth be before. If the world from you withhold of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along with meager fare, just remember in his word how he feeds the little bird. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Let's lift this great hymn of the church up to the glory of God with no further outline. If the world from you is whole of its silver and its gold and you have to get along with meager fare, well, just remember in his word Take your burdens to the Lord. Come on, lift it up, church. Well, leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord. If you trust that, he will surely take your burdens if your body suffers pain, if your body and your soul is almost sinking in despair, Jesus, Jesus knows. Take your burdens to the Lord. Leave it there, leave it there. Well, take your burdens. If you trust that, take your burdens to the Lord. When your enemies assail, when your enemies assail and your heart begins to fail, don't forget He will, he will make a way for you and will lead you safely through. Take your birth to the Lord. Come on, leave it there, leave it there. Oh, leave it there. Well, take your burden. If you trust that, he will surely take your burden. Last verse, come on. When your youthful days, come on. When your youthful and old age is still, and your body bends beneath weight of care, he will make, will never leave you then. Well, take your, come on, put your hand.
hands together. Let's lift that refrain, church. Come on, say, leave it there. Oh, leave it there. Take your burdens, take your burdens. If you trust that, come on, he will surely. Come on, take your burden. Lift that refrain again. Come on. Well, leave it there. Well, leave it there. Well, take your burdens. If you trust and if you trust and never doubt. Come on, take your burdens to the Lord. Last time, last time. Come on, leave it there. Oh, leave it there. Well, take your burdens. If you trust and if you trust and never doubt. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Come on, clap your hands, church. Come on. Take all your burdens to the Lord and leave them right there. Good morning, church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, first I'd like to say thank you, Heavenly Father. Thanking you as always, Heavenly Father, for the things you've done, things that you're about to do, and things that you continue to do for me and this congregation, Heavenly Father. We might take it for granted sometimes that you, you things just happen because they happen. We know things happen because of you, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, thank you for last night's slumber and this morning's early rising, Heavenly Father. Allowing us to wake up in our right minds, Heavenly Father. Putting our clothes on, Heavenly Father. Walking around the house, having breakfast, Heavenly Father. Knowing that, <clears throat> that our family ties were not broken this morning, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, thank you for this congregation, Heavenly Father. And thank you for giving them traveling mercies as they came to the church this morning, Heavenly Father. Thank you for those who wanted to be here, but for some unknown reason, they could not. Heavenly Father, thank you for those who are in that virtual space this morning, Heavenly Father. Maybe they couldn't get here, Heavenly Father, but we know they're worshiping you, Heavenly Father that virtual space. Heavenly Father, thank you for this choir as they sing those words of Zion this morning, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, thank the official boards of Temple Baptist Church, Heavenly Father, the deacon board, the deaconess board, the trustee board, the usher board, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, bless this congregation as a whole, from the heels of their feet to the, to the, to the crown of their head. Bless them all, Heavenly Father. Walk through this church this morning, Heavenly Father. Touch them with your grace. Let them feel your presence, Heavenly Father, because they know that we, the reason we come here is for you, Heavenly Father. We come here to worship with you and for you, Heavenly Father, for the things that you do. Heavenly Father, thank you for our pastor, giving him traveling mercies on his way to and fro as he drives from Baltimore back and forth, Heavenly Father. Protect him, Heavenly Father. He is who we ask for, Heavenly Father, and you saw fit to send him to us, Heavenly Father. Thank you for him, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, as he stands behind this sacred desk, Heavenly Father, preaching the words coming from you, Heavenly Father, so that we'll understand what's going on. Have Pastor Tiller move out the way, Heavenly Father, and we see more of you as he preaches his word, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, walk, come in his church and walk from the pulpit to the door, touching everyone as you come in, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, take time to walk in the streets of Chester, Heavenly Father. Bless this city as a whole, Heavenly Father. Bless the state of Pennsylvania, Heavenly Father. Bless the United Government, Heavenly Father. The United States Government, Heavenly Father. Because things are not the way we thought they would be. And Heavenly Father, bless those in that war zone, Heavenly Father. Another war seems like it's getting ready to kick off right now, Heavenly Father. But Heavenly Father, protect those out there, Heavenly Father. Those innocent folks that are out there, Heavenly Father getting struck by bombs or whatever, Heavenly Father, because they are just there. And Heavenly Father, protect them, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, look out for the families that are here all assembled, Heavenly Father. Look out for their families. Oh, and bless our children, Heavenly Father. We can't forget our children. 
Heavenly Father, put that hedge of protection around our children, Heavenly Father, and bless us as they go to and fro from church to school, all about their play days and whatever. Bless our children, Heavenly Father, because they are the future and they are the way. And these and all other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Let the words of my mouth. Will thou teach? Will thou teach? Me how? Our Father. Who art in heaven? Hallowed be. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In earth as it is. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for thine is the kingdom. The power, and the power and the glory, and the glory forever, forever and, ever. and ever. Come on, lift it up together. Oh. Come on, bless the name of the Lord as you take your seats, ushers. You may admit worshipers. Amen. It's a great day to give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Aren't you so glad to be in God's house one more time? Amen. I'm asking at this time for our youth and our young adults to meet us here at the altar as we prepare now for our meditation and children's prayer. Let's say amen for them as they come. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come on closer. How y'all doing this morning? That's wonderful. Y'all look absolutely amazing. Praise God. Thank God. Let's clap it up for our youth. Let's give it up for our youth. Thank you. Thank you. We need them. We need them. We need our youth. We thank God for them. We thank God for them. Um, one of my favorite songs by Yolanda Adams is What About the Children? And some years ago, we actually ministered to that song um, here at church. And it's always been a song that resonated within my spirit because I don't know if you guys know the value and how important you are 
And if you don't, I want you to know that you are loved, you are important, and we care about you. We care about you here at Temple Baptist Church. Your families care about you. I care about you. I love you. There's nothing that you guys can do about that. You can come to me and talk to me. There are so many here at church that you can come and talk to our pastor, uh, the deacons, the deaconess, the members. So I don't ever want you to feel like you can't talk to anyone. So in that song, What About the Children? I was listening to it this morning. And it says, what about the children? To ignore is so easy. So many innocent children choose the wrong way. And if not for those who love them, if it wasn't for our parents, our grandparents, the people at church who took us by the hand and showed us the way, I think about myself being a little girl and Work, being in the youth department and working with Deacon as Donna, you know, and she took us by the hand and showed us the way, showed us how to read the Bible, showed us how to do different pieces on the program. And those things are things that were instilled in us as a young age and that we just continue to hold into, continue to hold in our hearts and implement when we are older. And I just think about that because it's like, wow, I didn't look at that then. All of those things that I was learning as a child are the things that I am using today. So as I speak to the youth, I also want to speak to the adults as well. Encourage our youth. Encourage them. They need to be uplifted. They don't need to be put down. Yesterday we had a prayer breakfast and... Um, the prayer for the youth, one of the parts that stood out was like, you know, don't look at what it is that they have on. You know, don't criticize them. Don't put, the, put them down. And I'm like, wow, that is so important because we see all the time we look at youth and we look, we're like, you know, they don't have this kind of outfit on or they look like this or they're you know, they're putting them down, and that's not what we are supposed to do, especially as believers, you know, because they may not know. If there's something that they don't have, give it to them. If you don't feel like they're dressed the right way, go and buy them an outfit. If you feel like they're not talking the right way, teach them the right way to talk. Teach them the words to say. Teach them the right thing to do because they don't know. They don't know. And one of the things I would hear as an educator, I would hear teachers say all the time, I got mine, you trying to get yours. And I never subscribe to that notion because it's like, yes, while you have your education, we have to teach them. And they won't know unless we teach them. So they're not going to get that. They're not going to get that foundation unless we give it to them. So we have to show them the way. So let's not be a discouragement to them. Let's lift them up. Let's show them the way. Let's teach them the right thing to do and not chastise them in the midst of doing that. Amen? Amen? Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you this morning. We thank you for our youth. We thank you for our young adults. We thank you for them coming to through these doors each and every Sunday to serve you. God, we just ask that you just continue to show them the way. Continue to uh, just teach them. Continue to just put the things in their minds that are like you. Continue to have them go into the school buildings each and every day and do the right thing, not only to get an education, but to also be an encouragement to their friends, showing them the way, showing them the right things to do, and also having them turn away from anything that is the wrong thing to do. Because in this world today, these children are pressured so much. They see so much on social media. They see so much on TV. And, you know, and it can be, it can be very enticing for them, you know, to want to do these things, to want to try these things. But God, we just are so thankful for their parents, their church family, their our pastor who's in their lives to be able to show them the right way to go because our, they need us. They need us. And, Lord, we just thank you for them. We give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor. And these and all other blessings we ask in your sweet name. Amen.
scripture this morning. The scripture lesson this morning can be found in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, and I will be reading verses 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in, the, in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all that all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I have read from the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his word. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Fire shut up in my bones like Jeremiah won't leave me alone. I'm gonna sing to the almighty power. Spirit's got me so I can't sit down. Fire shut up in my bones. Like Jeremiah, it won't leave me alone. I'm gonna sing to the almighty power. Spirit's got me, so I can't sit down. No way can I hold. bones like Jeremiah it won't leave me alone I'm gonna sing to the almighty power spirit's got me so I can't sit down Lord I'm determined nothing's gonna turn I think of you. Fire shut up in my bones. Like Jeremiah, 
It won't leave me alone. I'm going to sing to the almighty power. Spirit's got me so I can't sit down. Fire. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> Happy Sunday, everybody. <laughs> Sorry for the delay, I'm not used to this. Uh -huh. Me, all right. <laughs> Giving honor to God and to Reverend Teller and to um, Reverend Clayton and Reverend Hughes and the officers in their prospective places. Happy Sunday. Oh, God, it's good to be in the house of God, isn't it? I tell you. There's nothing like fellowship. But I'm going to read this. I'm here for the announcement. Praise the Lord. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be obedient to this. All right. <laughs> April 15th, um, the MD Merlin, Virginia, and Carolina Club meeting at 7 p.m. April 17th, Wednesday in the Word at 8.30 p.m. The topic is Unbelievable Love in Romans 5, 1 through 11. April 18th, Pastor's Aid Rehearsals at 6 p.m. April 20th, Senior Usher's Meeting Rehearsal um, at 11 a.m. And the rehearsal for Living the Dream. It says 5 o'clock here, but it will be at 4 p.m. this Saturday. Um, remember Sunday school every Sunday morning at 9 a.m and um, right before service at 10.30 a.m., okay? Um, as far as living in the dream, our heritage, the honor to our heritage, we look forward to um, everyone showing up and just being a part of what the children and the young people are doing. It has been exciting, rehearsals have been well. We had a very, very good rehearsal yesterday. Um, tickets are $10. And um, you can see myself, um, Deacon Hudson, Sister Gloria, um, or even any other young people. They will tell you or give them, you know, your donation or let them know you want a ticket, and they will tell you who to sit. Amen? Amen. And we're asking.
asking everyone to please come out and support them. Let them know that they are loved and they are valued for the things that they contribute. And I'm telling you, they came prepared. They are excited about what they're doing. So we want to make sure we encourage their excitement because what's going to happen is that they're going to say, hey, come on to my church to their friends because there's something happening there and there's something to do. And before you know it, you're going to have to make room for them or they're going to have to make room for you. Amen. <laughs> The Sisterhood Ministry Pre-Mother's Day Breakfast will be Saturday, May 4th, and our thought for the week is at my lowest, God is my hope, at my darkest, God is my light, at my weakest, God is my strength, at my saddest, God is my comforter. Please keep our sick, homebound, and bereaved families in your prayers. And Sister Gloria Smith will come to discuss the upcoming sisterhood events. And then followed by um, her, Sister Pearl Burton, will come to welcome our guests and visitors. Good morning, Pastor Tiller, and good morning, Temple Baptist Church family. <laughs> I am here to just share a little bit more about our pre-Mother's Day breakfast, but in the bulletin you will see a little flyer, and that gives you some information, but we're, the Sisterhood Ministry, we're planning a very special pre-Mother's Day breakfast, so we really hope that everyone could come out, get a ticket. Um, I do have tickets today, or any of the other sisterhood uh, committee members will have tickets as well. But the, and we're planning a lot of special things, so please try to uh, come out. And for the men also, uh, you can purchase a ticket for a loved one or a relative or a neighbor, so we're not excluding the men. But anyway, the pre-Mother's Day breakfast will be held on Saturday, May 4th. The, uh, the flyer says 10 to 1. The tickets are $20, and it will be a uh, very delicious assorted breakfast items, door prizes and giveaways, and plus a few extra special uh, things that we will do during that uh, breakfast. So again, please join us. We do have tickets. Uh, they are ready to be sold. So see me or anyone else. I'll stay a few minutes if anyone would like to get tickets. And uh, we hope to see you there and enjoy our breakfast with us. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I don't know why I need this mic, but you know, I have to follow everybody else. <laughs> Recognizing my pastor, Reverend Hughes, Reverend Clayton, or any other minister that may be hit high in here. Now, if you're a stranger, you've got to stand up. Do, do we have any visitors? Yay! I knew it. I knew it. Oh, so glad to see you. Well, I don't know everybody's name, but I know everybody's face. And I just knew there was somebody here that I just want to tell this little story about me as a child growing up. I moved to the city, up north. And uh, I had this sort of an accent. Still had it. And uh, the young generation that was in my age and et cetera, they used to always laugh about my uh, accent. That I didn't use the word I-N-G at the end of the word. I didn't use the E-D. I didn't use the S. And they 
would all laugh. They would all laugh. They didn't know that I was a little girl from the South that went to Sunday school. And it was just one word there would always be at Sunday school. Did not need no ED. Did not need no ING. Didn't need no period. And when I laid that word on them, that I know how to pronounce Jesus. That is a word that never has an ending to it. But some other words, they end with that ing. They end with that ed. But Jesus' word, keep going, keep going. And I love calling his name. Hit me a note. Jesus, oh Jesus, I love calling your name. Jesus, oh Jesus, I
Anybody got joy in the middle of their soul? Come on, anybody got joy in their soul? Come on, don't fool me now. Anybody got joy in their soul? Come on, you ought to give God great praise in this house. Come on, bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. I get joy when I think about it. What he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. You ought to look down your row and tell somebody God's been good. Come on, find somebody and tell them God's been good. Now, if you know God's been good, you ought to show a sign this morning. Clap your hands, open your mouth. Tell God, thank you. Hey, yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. I found out that no matter what I'm going through, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I don't care what I'm facing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's my strength, strength like no other. Hallelujah to God. Amen. So good to see all of you in the house of God. Just find somebody near you. Tell them I'm so glad to see you. So glad. Come on, talk to them. Tell them you ain't talked to nobody all week. Tell them I'm so glad to see you. Hallelujah. Amen. To our online worshipers, we are so glad that you have uh, you have decided to join us. You have made your coffee, cooked your breakfast. You didn't listen to your radio station that played your favorite song. And now the 1030 hour has come and you are watching us online. And so we are so grateful. We are so grateful that all of you have uh, thought it not robbery. You didn't you didn't scroll past 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 different churches while you were scrolling online, yet you made the conscious decision, amen, to join us over here at Little Old Temple, amen, so we're so glad that you have joined us, amen, 
We encourage you to continue to like and subscribe. Subscribe to us on YouTube at TempleBC13. Follow us on Instagram at TempleBC13. And follow us on Facebook. Amen. Because there is indeed no place like Temple. Amen. We are a church that specializes in spiritual growth. Well, how do we do that, Pastor? So glad you asked. Our mission statement, feeding, <laughs> feeding and nurturing the body of Christ through fellowship, enlightenment, evangelism, and discipleship in order to cultivate spiritual growth. Our vision statement, we are prayerfully and purposefully engaging our church and community in five key areas, spiritual awareness, educational opportunities, fighting poverty, employment opportunities, and social justice. We do this through the word, through our worship, and through our witness. And that lets the whole world know that there is indeed no place like temple. Amen. And so, amen, I want to start off by um, giving a sanctified shout out to, amen, the Thomas family. On Friday, we had a wonderful, wonderful homegoing service. Amen for our beloved brother Kenneth Thomas. And so, amen, we know that, you know, after funerals, you know, calls stop, visits stop. They stop bringing us cakes. They stop bringing us different foods. And, you know, and so, and so life is supposed to go on. Amen. But we know that grief continues to be with us. And so we are continuing to pray for uh, Trustee Geraldine Thomas, Dr. Gloria Thomas, Sister Mary Thomas, the entire Thomas family as they continue to navigate this unknown season um, without their brother. And so we are continuing to wrap our loving arms around them. I just can't help but thank God for Trustee Geraldine Thomas, who even, even during um, the transition of her brother has just continued to be on her post, continued to serve, amen, even through what she's feeling. And so we continue to thank God for her. We continue to pray for her and the entire family. We know that God is continuing uh, to be with you all. Also want to give a sanctified shout out to uh, our Deaconess Ministry. Amen. We had a phenomenal time on yesterday morning. Amen, for our uh, prayer breakfast. And so we want to give a sanctified shout out to all who were there, all who participated, every person who uh, was invited and um, did a particular prayer. We thank God for each and every one of you. I want to give a shout out to the kitchen ministry. Amen. The kitchen ministry has been on double duty. Amen. They were on double duty. They, they served during the funeral services and then came back Saturday morning and served breakfast during that prayer breakfast. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If nobody told you thank you, your pastor wants to tell you thank you. I so appreciate you. Amen. And all of your hard work. Amen. I really appreciate that. I am excited about our Living After the Dream play. Amen. Our youth and our young adults are doing a phenomenal job. I want to shout out our young people. Amen. Amen. They are doing a fantastic job. Wherever their hands are assigned, they are doing it. They're doing it with no issues, no, no hiccup. They just serve wherever their hands are. And I'm looking forward to this living after the dream play. I'm asking everyone, please, ma'am, please, sir, grab, grab you a ticket. Grab you six tickets. Amen. And let's support our youth and our young adults. And let's be a blessing to them, amen, as they continue uh, to uh, serve. Um, I also want to highlight the pre-Mother's Day breakfast um, on May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Praise the name of the Lord. I, ta -da, amen. Had to get that one out. Amen. On May the 4th uh, 10 a <laughs> at 10 a.m., amen, our pre-Mother's Day breakfast. Now, I'm going to tell you all right now. Mama Della done already done sent out the word and delegated that I'm one of the servers. Amen. Now, I, was, I probably wasn't supposed to say that, but I'm going to say it anyway. Amen. Um, I'm going to be one of the servers, so I'm looking forward, amen, to this breakfast and serving all of the wonderful mothers. Amen. That will be there. Listen, grab your tickets 
Amen. And let's have a wonderful, 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 wonderful afternoon, morning of worship, um, of fellowship. Amen. Some great things are in store. I want to shout out the Sisterhood Ministry. Amen. For their hard work. Trustee Livingston. Amen. And the Sisterhood Ministry doing a fantastic job. Amen. And so we're, listen, y'all, our ministries are working. Amen. And so we are so grateful. We are so grateful. Now, y'all, I got to come down to the floor. I got to talk to y'all. I got to talk to y'all. Got to talk to y'all. Um, on uh, yesterday, on yesterday before, prior to um, our uh, Living After the Dream play, uh, we, had a, we had a little incident here at the church yesterday. Um, we had a visitor um, that came and uh, was in our church on yesterday. Um, and I just want you all to know that that situation has been taken care of. Um, we, have, we have done all that we needed to do. The Chester police were here. I want to give a sanctified shout out to them. They, they came in a timely manner to um, check the entire building from top to bottom um, and wanted to make sure that the area was clear. Um, and I want you all to know that the leadership is doing all that we can um, to continue to ensure that our building is safe, our building is secure. Um, I thank God for our property manager, amen, trustee Jiffy Handy, amen, who continues to do a great job of uh, making sure, come on, we can thank God for him, amen, who does a phenomenal job uh, of making sure that um, our building is secure, amen. And so um, going forward, going forward, um, after 1115, after 1115, that side door where the parking lot is will be locked at 11.15, and so we're asking everybody, amen, at 11.16 to make your way around here to the front of the building, amen, and come through those red doors, amen? Amen. So we want to make sure, um, I don't want anybody to be alarmed, I don't want anybody to be scared, amen, everything is fine, um, we are secure, amen, and God's still going to get the glory, amen? Amen, amen. Amen. So just continue to keep us in your prayers as we continue to uh, navigate these norms and as we are opening back up. Amen. We just want to make sure, amen, that those that are here during the week are safe and protected. Amen. Amen. Because we not only we got the Bible, but we got some other ways to protect. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Amen. It's giving time in the house of God. It's giving time. In God's house. What shall I render unto God for all of his wonderful, wonderful, wonderful blessings that he continues um, to bestow upon us? We thank God. The hymn writer reminds us that all we've needed, God's hand has provided it for us. It's of no goodness of our own. It's of no, it's no accident that God continues to provide and make ways for us. Amen. Let me get one of those too. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. We want to continue to be a blessing to uh, God's storehouse. Amen. We give uh, via our tithe um, and via our offerings. Amen. Will a man rob God? Not today. Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to continue to be a blessing to God's storehouse. Um, and if you're like um, me, you are tech savvy, you like to give with your technology, uh, we have ways that you can give via technology, um, via Zelle, as well as via Givelify. That information is on your screen. That information is in your bulletin. Amen. If you are, if you are not like me and you're not tech savvy and you don't like technology, amen, we still have ways for you to give as well. You can give via cash, check, money order. Amen. You can mail it to the church or you can, um, as they lead you out, give your gifts that way. But we want to continue uh, to be a blessing to God's storehouse. We want to continue um, to keep our lights on and keep the business of the church um, in a sustainable way. Um, our trustees do a phenomenal job of ensuring that we are doing what we need to do to ensure that God's kingdom is still being funded and that our resources are still being provided. Amen. Once you have your gifts, amen, won't you stand all over the building and lift those gifts up unto the Lord. Amen. Lift them up to the Lord. Wave them up in the air like you just don't care. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. Let's give our gifts, whether you're giving it via your phone or you've got your nice envelopes, lift them up before the Lord. Father, take this little and make it much. For little becomes much when we place it in the master's hand. Thank you, Lord, for every gift. Thank you, Lord, for every gift giver. We ask God that you would continue to open up the windows of heaven and pour our blessings upon us that we won't have room enough to receive. Thank you, Lord, for these that are planting their seeds into this fallow ground called Temple Baptist Church. We know that when we plant our seeds, God, that we are believing you for a bountiful harvest. Now, God, bless us, keep us, uh, and we will give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. You're in the hands of our ushers, our deacons, and our trustees as we give with Jesus' joy. Let's receive our choir and our ushers as they begin to press us down.
If you know he's blessing you, come on, clap your hands. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given. Let the people say, Amen. Oh. Come on, you may have your seats in the presence of Almighty God. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. The grass withers, the flower fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. How many of you are ready to receive a word from the Lord? All right, amen. Amen. The starlights are going to come and carry us further into our worship experience, and then immediately following them, we shall open the book to receive a message from hope, of hope on this second Sunday. Amen. Let's say amen for them as they come at this time.
Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't know about you, but every time I get a chance, I got to praise God for what he's done. He took me through a lot, but he also brought me out of a lot. And I give him praise, glory, and honor today. I'm able to walk again. I'm able to talk again. Still working on the speech, but I'm getting better, and that's because of the almighty God. I don't know how many of you can go through what I've been through, but I want you to know that God is a real God. And what he says he will do, he will do. So I'll never, ever stop praising his name. done so much for us. And that's why the Bible reminds us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. You don't know what your neighbor been going through. I refuse to stagger anybody's praise. 
I'm not restricted to a time limit. The more I praise him, the better I feel. And sometimes it's a great thing when we get amongst other like-minded people because that praise will ricochet a praise over here on this side and that praise will ricochet a praise on this side and when we all get together, a time shall be had. Hallelujah. I can't stop praising his name. Now I know some of y'all are looking up here and like, what in the world is pastor doing with these bags up here on the, on the, uh, here in the aisle, in the altar area. Well, the word of God was read in your hearing this morning out of Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. I want to arrest your attention on that 28th verse. That 28th verse in Matthew chapter 11 simply says this, come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, <laughs> and I will give you rest. Come to me. Those words are in red. That's Jesus talking to you. Come to me, all you who labor and a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For just a few moments, I want to tag this text that the Holy Spirit shall can and will guide with this thought in mind, the baggage handler. That's what I want to talk about this morning, the baggage handler. <laughs> the text which lends its ear to us this morning finds Jesus explaining to his disciples that their burdens will be lighter if they gave them to him. He told them, Reverend Clayton, to take his yoke upon them because his burden is light. Now, the people knew what Jesus referred to because in the time of our text, they were farmers. They knew that yokes were used by animals to pull wagons. Sometimes people placed yokes on their shoulders <laughs> to help carry large loads. The yokes often became heavy. So Jesus applied the heavy yoke idea to people who tried to be happy by obeying the hundreds of items in the law without really knowing God. The Bible also refers to sin as a great yoke upon us. In both cases, Jesus asked every believer, to let him give them a lighter load. But of course, it would mean, says the relative, that they would have to take a chance on him and let go of the world. Now, those who travel can understand the idea of carrying our burdens to the Lord. If we can think of Jesus as the divine baggage handler, there are three things that divine baggage handler will show us. Can I give y'all those three things and then I'll let y'all go? First thing the baggage handler gives us, he shows us what to pack. He shows us what to pack. There are many who try to travel and pack everything but the kitchen sink into their suitcase. Now, if that's your neighbor, don't look at him. Just 
nudge them and tell them the pastor talking about you. Much of what we pack, we don't really need. What you putting it in that bag for? Jesus, <laughs> Jesus shows us what to pack. We need those things that will help us live a fruitful life as a child of God. Matthew 6.33 makes it plain. Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. What we need to pack is an abundance of prayer, faith, and hope. Anything else that we pack is a hindrance. He not only shows us what to pack, second thing he shows us is how to pack. Now, if you're like me, if you've ever stood at an airport, you've probably seen poorly packed pieces of luggage. Now, let's be clear. It's not that the luggage had too much. It's that it had no order. Hmm. There was so much stuff in the luggage that it bulged at the seams, ripping zippers and sticking out in all of the wrong places. What the divine baggage handler does for us is show us how to live our lives decently and in order. David said in the psalm that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. If we, if we live ordered lives, then it will be easier for us to move on from one destination to the other. The divine baggage handler shows us what to pack, how to pack. Thirdly, he shows us how much to pack. There are many who try to board a plane with luggage that's way too heavy. Now, again, if that's your neighbor, don't tell, just don't look at them. Most airports, most airports have a 50-pound limit for a piece of luggage. To stay within this limit, we've got to know how much to pack. There are many today who are carrying too much baggage. Well, well, well. Past relationship worries, baggage. Baby mama, baby daddy drama, baggage. The demons of our past that try to haunt us, baggage. All of this is being stuffed in our luggage. So no wonder Jesus said in our text, Hope you still got your Bibles and your tablets open. Jesus says, come unto me. Good God from on high. All you who are weary, heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This baggage handler shows us three other things not to pack. He shows us what to pack. And there are three things that he shows us not to pack. First thing you don't need to pack is guilt. First thing, guilt. That's not in the slide, but you want to write that down. Some carry guilt 
with them every day. They made a mistake a while back. And they've never forgiven themselves. They blame themselves constantly. Even though they prayed to God, he has forgiven them, washed away the guilt with his blood. They carry the guilt around with them. It's a heavy load. Sometimes they're smiling, shaking hands, and seem warm and carefree. That's because they have put their guilt on wheels. But they're still carrying it around. Beloved, we should travel lighter, leaving the guilt behind us, especially considering Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Since Jesus has forgiven our mistakes, we should not make our load heavier. Second thing we shouldn't pack, fear. Get fear out of that bag. Some carry fear with them every day. They're afraid of failure. Afraid to take opportunities and step out on faith. Fear consumes them every day. They can't get away from it. Year to year to year to year. They live in fear of losing their job, getting demoted, not being accepted. They constantly live in fear. But there is good news. When God is on our side, we have nothing to fear in this life. Psalm 118 verse 6, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me. Our theme scripture for this year, Psalm 27, the Lord is my life. And my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Third thing we shouldn't pack. Worry. Get that out of your bag. Get worry out of your bag. Perhaps, perhaps, Mama Vanessa, the, the, the heaviest piece of luggage to carry around is worry. I'm going to try my best, Reverend. <laughs> worry is more than a concern. It is over concern. Those who worry invent scenarios, watch this, that may never happen. They muse, <laughs> whew, good God Almighty, they, they muse over projected tragedy and they make a bad case even worse because of their worry. Many get bags under their eyes. Lose sleep. Suffer deteriorating health. Suffer stress. Suffer anxiety. Have depression. Because they worry so much. They carry it around. Carry it around. Daily. Jesus addressing this subject I'm telling you, Jesus got a, got, a, got a topic and a solution for everything. Him addressing this subject made this response in Matthew chapter 6. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field 
and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have little faith? A hymn writer worded it a little differently, says the Derelda. Why should I feel this carriage? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus when Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. You ought to look down your road and tell somebody, he watches over me. All right, I got to go. I'm done. I got to get back down the road. But sisters and brothers, as we journey from one destination to another in this life, we must check our baggage at the gate and leave them there. <sighs> Good God from on high. There are many who have yet learned to check the baggage because they do not trust the baggage handlers. <laughs> oh, I feel like preaching this morning. They try to move to their next destination with a carry-on, a small piece of luggage stuffed full of a lot of baggage. Their goal is to make a lot of baggage fit in the small spaces. Woo! There is a great amount of confidence that comes with trusting your bags to the right ramp agent. Because if he knows what he's doing, he'll see that your luggage gets to where you're going. Woo! Good God Almighty. You don't want to be going to the city, but your luggage which has your prayer, is in the other country. You don't want to be going over here, but your luggage, which has your faith, is over there. You don't want to be landing, but your luggage, which contains your faith, is taking off. We like to fly airlines that have proven that their ramp agents know what they're doing. That's why the old saints would say, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. That's also why David declared, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. When you leave your baggage with the baggage handler, you can be sure that he will take care of your needs. Leave it there. Don't try to take it with you. If the world from you withhold of its silver and its gold and you have to get along with meager fare, just remember in his word how he feeds. Didn't we sing that this morning? How he feeds the little bird. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. If you leave it there, he'll turn your loneliness and give you everlasting comfort. He'll take your trial and give you strength to endure. He'll take your heartache and give you a love that will heal. He'll turn your sorrow into gladness, your weakness into strength, your bow down head and raise it up to joy. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord. But wait. But wait. 
One final thing, forgot to tell you, one final thing. When you get to your destination, you will go to the baggage claim area to pick up your luggage. There will be dozens of suitcases that are coming to you on a conveyor belt. Many of them look like yours. But be careful. You came to pack up your divinely packed luggage, not somebody else's baggage. Your luggage was packed by the divine baggage handler. It may look like someone else is on the outside, but yours is different. Your luggage is filled with love because the hate has been removed. Your baggage is filled with hope because all of the despair has been removed. Your luggage is filled with joy because all of the sadness has been removed. Your luggage is filled with salvation because the stain of sin has been removed. Your baggage is light because the divine baggage handler is carrying your load. Tell me who is the divine baggage handler for the Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes and with his stripes we are healed. He knows a lot about carrying baggage because one day, 2,000 years ago, he went up the Via Dolorosa. He took the baggage of all the world on his shoulders and carried it up Golgotha's Hill. He knows about handling baggage for he nailed, he was nailed to a cross and died on Calvary. But he also knows how to get rid of baggage because early, I said early, early Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with all power in his baggage, in his baggage free hands. Put your life in the hands of the baggage handler and he will make everything all right. Is there anybody here that can testify that my bags were heavy, filled with stuff that I did not need? But when I put that baggage in the hands of the Lord, he made my burdens very light. So I'm going into this new year with a lighter load. I'm going to my destination with a lighter load because Jesus has got my bags. Jesus got my bags. Jesus got my bags. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I'm his own. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Somebody show yeah. Give it to him. Give it to him. Stop carrying that baggage. Give it to him. He's the divine baggage handler. He's got your bag. He's got your bag. Leave it with the baggage handler and go to your destination knowing that if God be for us, who can be against us? You ought to get out of your seat and tell five people, he's got my bag. He's got my bag. He's got my bag. He got my bag. He's 
He's got my bag. He's got your bag. He's got your bag. You can stop worrying. You can stop crying. You can stop having fits. God's got your bag. I'm done. I'm done. Sisters and brothers, those hymns have power. The chorus to that hymn said, leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens. We're going we to change that word from burden to baggage. Take your baggage to the Lord and don't go get it. Leave it there. Then I love the next part of that hymn. If you trust if you trust and never doubt he'll surely bring you out. Take your baggage to the Lord. When you go into that airport when you go in that airport Praise him. Take your baggage. I'm going to start from back here and come back down. Think of all this stuff. Think of all this stuff as the baggage you've been trying to carry for years and years and years. You get up to that counter, that person says it's 51.5 pounds. God is saying to you, open that bag and take that stuff you've been worrying about out the bag. My bag now weighs 35 pounds. And leave it right there. Once you give your bags to the divine baggage handler, go on about your business. Check in. Go grab you some lunch. Go sit in that terminal. Wait till they call your destination. Go on about your business. The point I'm making is this. Some of us are carrying too much stuff. Stuff God been told you to let go of. You still carrying it. God is saying to each and every one of us, drop your load. Drop the load. Give it to me. I can handle it far better than you can handle it. Leave it at the gate. Let him check it in. Let him check your bags in. And leave them right there. I'm telling you, I know some of you say, well, Reverend, that's easier said than done. 
It's easier said than done, Reverend. You don't know how much I'm carrying. Some of us, we carrying loads for our family. Hallelujah. Some of us, we have so much to carry, they won't even let you take it on. Won't even put it in the carry-on. Nope, can't take it. Take them big old things of lotion, knowing full well they ain't going to let you put that in there. It's supposed to have a travel size. <laughs> I've been guilty of that a few times. It's like, no, no, sir, you can't take that in there and just, just dump it right in the trash. Well, you can't wait till I come back. <laughs> travel size. Walmart got a whole travel size section. When you know you're about to travel, go right in Walmart, in that travel size section. Got all your travel needs right there, so you ain't got to worry about that. Take your burdens to the Lord. Leave them there. Leave them there. God has more in store for us. But we spend too much time with worry, guilt, and those things continue to weigh heavy on us. God is saying, I've already taken care of that situation. I've already made the way for you. You may can't see the staircase. You may can't see where your destination is going. But trust me, I got you. That's all God is saying. I got you. Leave it to me. I got you. Leave that person that's getting on your nerves to me. I got you. Block that number. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to be there for you. Take your burdens to the Lord. Leave them there. Come on, bless the name of Jesus. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord. Sing that chorus again. Come on. Leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it. Take your baggage. Take your baggage to the Lord. I love y'all. If you trust and if you trust and never doubt, he will surely take your baggage Take your baggage to the Lord. I want to open the doors of the church. I want to quickly open the doors of the church. Listen, don't ever want to make the assumption that everybody in here is saved. Salvation is a free gift that God has given to us. When he died, over 2,000 years ago. There are no tricks. There are no gimmicks. You ain't got to stand in no money line. We're on a journey. And our Bible study, which is at 6.30 on Wednesdays, we're talking about the Romans' road to salvation. And we've certainly been blessed in our first lesson. So join us, just a little plug, join us next, this coming Wednesday, as we continue to go down that road, that Romans road to salvation. But there's nothing to it. 
He said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Listen, when, you, when, you, when God saves you, when he's really saved you, everything you did from 30 seconds prior to however long to go back, it's irrelevant. Your past is irrelevant. That's why I'm glad God is not like man. Man will be the first ones Soon as you, they see you come up, soon as they see you elevate, they want to they wanna hit you with remember wins. They want to all of a sudden go down memory lane and bring up stuff from three years ago, five years ago. Remember when we did this? Remember when we went here? And remember we, oh, turn up, turn up. Don't laugh at me. love y'all, man. <laughs> they want to bring up your past to try to hinder your progress. But the devil is a liar. I refuse to allow anybody to make me feel sorry about my salvation. And just because you saved don't mean you can't have fun. I'm the life of any party. <laughs> Listen, all I did was change dance partners. Come on, somebody. That's all I did. I still get down. I just had to change partners. If you're here today and you're not saved, you're here today and you're not saved, and you want to make Jesus your Lord, your Savior, won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? I offer Christ to you, my sister, my brother. That's you. Won't you come? Second invitation. Second invitation is for those who uh, you need to reaffirm your faith. You need to reaffirm your faith. You need to reaffirm your walk with the Lord. You're saved, but you needed to walk away for a season. God says, come on back home. God says, come on back home. If that's you, won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Third and final invitation for those that are in need of a church home. If you want to make temple your church home. God has great things in store for us. I believe that we are on the precipice of something absolutely wonderful here at Temple. Not only are we growing numerically, but God is growing us spiritually. And I've seen it from my first Sunday, January 1st, 2023, to now, April 14th, 2024. God has been good to Temple. And I want you to be a part of what God is doing. I want you to be a part of what God is doing. Now, uh, we've done something different. Um, now, the leadership doesn't know this, but I'm telling you now, um, I am implementing e-members. Look to implement e-members. Oh, no, what, what's an e-member? E-member is those that may be in other states, maybe in other cities, maybe in other countries, but they like what God is doing here at Temple. And so though they can't get here physically, they can watch us online. And I am so privileged, I'm so privileged and so happy to announce 
that we have our very first e-member that is a part of our fellowship. Evangelist Susan Newton is watching us all the way from South Carolina. Now, those of you who, amen, you can clap for her. That's my aunt. Y'all can clap for her. Praise the Lord. Those of you who, some of you, you may watch the replay or go back and watch it. Um, you may see her um, in the comments. Um, and she might be watching us even right now. Um, she's having a very difficult health challenge. Having a very difficult health challenge. And so we are praying and believing God for miracles, signs, and wonders. And so she said to me, she's always said, she said, she said, uh, when you get your church, I want to be a member of your church. And so on this past week, I made that official. And she is now an e-member of our fellowship. So I will be connecting with the, with the welcome ministry. I'll be connecting with the welcome ministry and our leadership and um, we'll navigate how that's going to look, amen, and what we'll do for our electronic members. But we don't want to turn anybody away who wants to have an opportunity to be a part of our fellowship. Amen. So that's one that's a part of our family. Amen. If there's anybody, amen, anybody else, you're in need of a church home, amen, won't you come? Won't you come? If you're saved, know you're saved. You're part of God's family. Come on, give God great praise. Come on, give God great praise. I'm going to open the altar for prayer. I'm going to open the altar for prayer. If you desire prayer, come on and meet us here at this altar. Come on and meet us here at this altar. Meet us here at this altar. If you desire prayer. Hallelujah. We thank God that our that He continues to look out for us and continues to sustain us. Very walking close to thee. Let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. How many of you desire a closer walk with the Lord? Just one time. Come on, just a closer. Just a closer walk with thee. Well, I'm singing dead. Well, let it be. Let me say this to those of you that are, those of you that are here at this altar. Whatever you came up here with, whatever you came up here with, when upon saying amen and you returning to your seat, leave whatever you brought up here, up here. Don't take it back to your seat. We serve a God who can handle our situations far better than we can. I want to say to you, leave it here. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you in prayer. First of all, before I ask you for anything, I want to say thank you. 
thank you for being the baggage handler I never knew I needed. Thank you. Because you take our burdens and you handle them in a way that we couldn't. Thank you because your word reminds us that when we come to you, though we're burdened, though we're tired, though we're heavy laden, you, Father, give us rest. Thank you for giving us rest. I ask, Father, that you would give us a great night's rest. No longer allowing the worries and cares of this life to weigh down on us. No longer allowing for anything that's been bothering us to bother us any longer. Thank you for the grace to handle our situations. Thank you that you have given us the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. I have no reason to fear. You are our life, Father. You are our salvation. And so, God, I ask that each person that's here at this altar touch them in a special way. Touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, God. Whatever they come standing in need of, God, it may be for them, it may be for somebody else, but God, you know. And I thank you for meeting their need. Thank you for looking beyond our faults, looking beyond our missteps, looking beyond our shortcomings meeting us at the point of our need. Thank you that you are a God of more than enough. Thank you for supplying every one of our needs. Thank you that you continue to make ways for us. You continue to open doors for us. You continue to do the impossible for us. Now, God, we ask a special blessing over those who are confined to their homes, confined to hospital beds. We're praying, God, that your angels would be dispatched into their rooms, God, and that you would comfort them even right now. We pray for bereaved families, God, families who are still grieving the loss of loved ones, God. We pray for them. God, thank you for reminding us in your word that you are the baggage handler. You carry our burdens. You carry our weights, God. You made the ultimate sacrifice for us over 2,000 years ago when you died on that old rugged cross. And so, God, help us to take our burdens to you. Help us, God, to take that guilt, that worry. Help us to get it off of us. We want to be just like you, God. We want to walk like you. We want to talk like you. We want to live so you can use us, God. So help us get that baggage off of us. For you, O oh Lord, are a shield for us. You're our glory. You're the lifter up of our head. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Do these things, God, and we'll give you glory. We'll give you honor. We'll give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hug somebody near you. Tell them he's got it. God's got it. Hug somebody. Tell them God's got you. God's got you. God's got you. Find somebody near you. Tell them God's got you.
Amen. Close to thee. Well, let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. Everyone standing, we're getting ready to go. We're getting ready to go. Aren't you so glad you came to church this morning? Aren't you glad you came to church this morning? Amen. We thank God that we serve a God who is the divine baggage handler. When you leave here today, leave your burdens, leave your cares, leave your worries to him. He alone can handle our problems. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Pray. Come on, say praise, Father, Son, and hope. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up the light of his countenance all around you. And may he give you peace in Jesus' name. Come on, say on. One more time, say on. Amen. God bless you, God keep you, is my prayer.